One of our very own, Ms. Rebecca Milwaukee, has been chosen as the 2012 National Teacher of the Year. Many of you have witnessed the wonderful job she did in accepting an award from President Obama. She represents everything that is right about teaching and teachers in America. Most importantly, she exemplifies a caring professional who puts kids and families first. So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce Rebecca Milwaukee. I've been to these things before. They usually take about 16 hours. I thought I'd have a few hours before I was on, but um, I guess not. Thank you, President, Interim President Helen Brand. Thank you, Dean Spagna. Thank you, the class of 2012, for inviting me to be here with you today. It's, it's my great honor. This is my first commencement address. And I know, right? Man. Um, I would think it's appropriate to start this with a moment of silence during which you would be wise to lower your expectations. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> that about does it. Good. All right. So like I said, this is my first commencement address, and it caps off a really thrilling week of um, communication with young people, and I want you to know your place in this important and hallowed week, so I thought I would share my week with you. You see, um, I teach seventh grade, today was my last day, and it's maturity week in middle school, and in case you don't know what that means, it means in the science classes there's some really special lessons going on. <laughs> and um, those lessons actually generate more questions than they answer, and so being the good team teacher that I am, I seek to help Mr. Lundy you know, answer some of the deep and I won't say probing, that's inappropriate, <laughs> questions that the kids have. And so this week I got to talk about um, why do I have so much hair down there and why is it so small and this is Milwaukee, what is a booty call? <laughs> on Tuesday I got to explain to poor Jasmine why she won't be getting a passing grade on her Renaissance research paper because <clears throat> one, it's ripped entirely from that August font of wisdom, Wikipedia. And two, I'm pretty certain that Michelangelo did not paint the ceiling of the 16th chapel. I checked YesNet. It was the 17th. Get your facts right, Jasmine. On Wednesday, I got to call Mrs. Jackson and say that it appeared her daughter had come to school without pants on only to find out that no, indeed, that four-inch little scarf of fabric covering that 12-year-old's pelvis was the skirt she was sent out the door in. <sighs> Awkward. <laughs> and today, Thursday, here I am with you, expected to deliver some profound and motivational words of wisdom as you go on your journey. And I just want to say that for your sake and mine, I hope it goes a lot better than the rest of my week has. So. Seeing as this is my first address, I did a lot of research. You've been doing a lot of research. I did a lot of research, and I YouTubed a whole bunch of commencement addresses, and I found out that, you know, in addition to being motivational and wonderful and inspiring, they all had one thing in common. They were all 20 minutes. Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, 20 minutes. Maria Shriver's last week, 20 minutes. Barack Obama's, Mitt Romney's, Will Ferrell's, Conan O'Brien's, everyone's 20 minutes. And yet, in every pre-commencement conversation I had with De Dean Spagna, he vigorously reiterated that I would have 10 minutes. <laughs> 10. Not 11, not 12, 10. Nine, actually, eight would be preferable. 10. <laughs> and at first, I tried not to be offended. I mean, my God, I'm not a celebrity or anything. And then it dawned on me. I'm so glad I work in education. I'm used to getting the results that everyone else gets with half the resources. <laughs> But I've already wasted two of my eight minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and go on. I was recently named the National Teacher of the Year at the White House by our President Barack Obama. What a moment. Oh my gosh. Girls, he's everything you'll imagine him to be. He's tall, he's handsome, he was, gentleman, he was genuine, he was real, authentic, he was such a nice man. Also re-electable, I believe. And, <laughs> He was so generous to invite me to his house, our house really, to receive that honor, one that I share with millions of amazing teachers across this nation, and that day was a highlight. But I have to tell you, 15 years ago when I walked off this campus with my credential and into my classroom, that felt like home. 
being in my classroom is home for me. You see, the central truth of my life, and probably yours, is that I'm a teacher. It's my passion, it's my calling, it's what I am supposed to be doing. It is a deeply challenging and ultimately so satisfying swirl. Speaking of swirls, teaching is in many ways the educational and emotional equivalent of whitewater rafting. <laughs> Periods of calm are occasionally interrupted with frantic bursts of turbulence. Boredom mixes with excitement. Beauty and reflection mix with doubt, disappointment, hesitation. There are moments of exhilaration followed by near-death encounters. Some days you're going to confidently navigate the treacherous rapids, but others, the entire boat capsizes. I mean, you go into it, right? Well-prepared, excited, dry. You endure a thousand different challenges, each one different from the next, and you gather skill and confidence along the way, and you are going to get tossed and tumbled about by the experience. And that river, well, it spits you out at the end, exhausted crawling on your hands and knees up that shore, kissing every blessed rock along the way, and, and realizing that you're so thankful to be alive and you swear to yourself, I'm never going to do that again. But you know what? The next day dawns and it's fresh and filled with promise and possibility, and you say, anything that's really that good or any good at all deserves another go. And so you go back to the river. This is teaching. To be more specific, that's the first day of teaching. <laughs> yeah, but despite all the turmoil, all the thrills and the chills, there's glory there, real glory, and you will be blessed and honored to return to that river day after day. As an English teacher, I have spent my fair share of time in metaphor junction, so if you'll permit me, I'm gonna run with this whole white water rafting thing with you, not to be glib, no, but because when you work in education, it ends up being a pretty apt metaphor. You see, you're about to embark on the trip of a lifetime, and you've already taken so many of the steps that you needed to prepare for your journey. Look at you. Here you are, degree nearly in hand. This is such a proud moment for you, for your families, and for this university. Congratulations. But before you go, there are a few things I'd like you to consider. No matter where in education you begin your journey, you're going to be in the same boat with lots of like-minded individuals who want to do what you want to do, and they've chosen to go on the same journey with you. Make sure you honor their compassion, their commitment, and their dedication just as much as you do your own. A friendly smile, an outstretched hand, a warm, genuine welcome to all who climb aboard are an absolute must. Whatever you do, once you shove off, you all got to row in the same direction, or you're not going to get anywhere very fast. Identify your goals, create a vision of success, and then cooperate and collaborate until you get there. Talk to one another, help your colleagues, learn from them, teach them, listen to them, speak the truth to them, even when doing so is uncomfortable. Make each other look good, because if you do, you're going to get exactly where you meant to go, and you're going to look good doing it. It helps on this journey if you bring an experienced guide, someone who's gone down this river before, someone who has the wisdom and the wherewithal to share with you that wisdom at the moment that it can do you the most good. Find them. They're waiting for you. I wish I could say they're in the faculty lunchroom, but they probably aren't. These people are busy. They're in their classrooms working on their lessons. They're in their classrooms at lunch helping kids. They're out on campus making their school the best school it can be. They're busy people, but find them. They're out there waiting for you. They will help you become the you you're supposed to be, and they'll help, you, they'll help guide you there expertly, so please find them. You gotta have a cooler. You gotta have a cooler, and it's gotta be full of the things that nourish and sustain you, and I think some of you have already taken my advice as I look out in the stands, so that's a good thing. Eat well, exercise, read, travel, do all of the things that make you an amazing person and an incredible teacher to have. Whatever you do, do not become the job. Let the job become a beautiful reflection of the unique person that you are. You're gonna encounter dangerous rapids. You're gonna hit some rocks, the boat's gonna tip over, and you're gonna fall overboard. It happens, and it's not gonna kill you. You've gotta, you will be embarrassed by your mistakes, you'll be humbled, you may even be humiliated. You might lose your job. You're going to, it, it'll be okay. Learn from your mistakes get better. That's all we can ask of anybody. 
learn from your mistakes, and when you've come up for air, reach back to the boat, because you'll see dozens of outstretched arms waiting to pull you back to safety. It's happened to all of us. We've all been there. You'll be okay. But most importantly, remember from time to time to look up from what you're doing, your life's work, and see the beauty that surrounds you. Really see it. Take time to look at what it is you're doing. See the hope the pride, the expectation in the faces of the children you'll teach, in the colleagues with whom you'll do your life's work, and in the parents whose children's futures you shape. Take it in. Really marvel at the beauty, the power, the responsibility that you have as an educator. It is an amazing thing. Each child, each lesson, each day that you spend in the service of educating another human being is your opportunity to change the world, to create the better world we all want to live in, and to form the futures we leave our children and theirs. Take time to look up and see the work you're doing. This is your life's work. This is the river you return to. Now, I'm not certain if my metaphor held up, and, and I suppose if it didn't, then I can only leave you with this, that in my foolish attempts to paint a bigger picture for you, what it all boils down to is essentially very, very simple. Work hard, stay curious, get better at your job every day, surround yourself with great people, respect every person you teach, but please love them even more. Ennoble this profession with your efforts. Be kind to everyone, but by God, have fun. You are about to go on the ride of a lifetime. Congratulations for all you have done to get this far in your journey, and my great good luck to you as you travel on. Thank you so much.